Here's our morning. I know. I didn't get a sunrise. I'm a little slow. Lots of contrails up there. One being made as I can see it. In case you can't hear the noise in the background, I hear a skid steer running. It's been going for almost an hour. Step in here and I can't see nothing. And yeah, she's got the lights on in here. Not that it's dark in here, but when you go from out there to in here, you can't see anything. Yeah, cruising right along. She's actually doing pretty good. That's uh, as deep as that is. That's probably about three of our big manure spreader loads. Seriously. So, she's still got a lot of work to do. She was worried about having enough room out there in the feed barn, in the manure barn. You kind of see her in there, backing out. She said she filled two full sections yesterday. Well, one way or the other, it'll fit. Then it'll settle down, and we can push it up, then it'll fit longer, you know. But I figured I'd show you this. I'm uh, finally, hopefully, going to make it to town. It's actually been one month. Hmm. A month ago, I talked to Tom on the phone and told him uh, what we needed for sure on the wheel spacers. And I called him this morning, and he... Oh, hey, come on. I know. I understand. He was busier than shit. You know, his wife had just passed, and the cabinet shop, they said they have been really busy. He said uh, they've, they're doing like two or three times more work than normal. And one reason for it is his boss doesn't buy small quantities at a time. I mean, even as busy as they are, they probably have enough materials to build cabinets for almost a year. Eh, she wants to talk to me. Wouldn't you know it? I figured she would. But, so he spaced our last conversation, so I got him straightened out. Hopefully he's going to, he he's putting that on the list for this week, this coming week. And uh, I got to go out and swap my hydraulic fittings get the right ones since I goofed up on that and look, she's just gonna sit there oh well I'll let you go for now I'll bring you back that patch right there long narrow 40 acre strip goes from the fence line back there to wait for it wait for it wait for it right there that's for sale apparently now that uh, goes with that place there one of the brothers that owns well actually this whole place is kind of funky the two brothers have everything split up each has equal amounts all along here down that direction is basically split in 10 acre lots well at least they plant it in 10 acre lots alternating one lot belongs to one one belongs to the other but that 40 which rank scammers gotta love that crap um, the 40 along the south side actually went to the one brother's ex-wife like god 20 25 30 years ago whenever they divorced it's been forever ago and seems to me i heard she passed and to the best of my knowledge the only ones that would inherit stuff from her would be their children i don't think she ever remarried i don't know i could be wrong Maybe she left the stuff to the state. I have no idea. So I have no idea who's actually selling it other than I happened to see the realtor parked along the road down there the other night. Actually, number two saw her and says, there's a gal down the road with cones by her car. And I don't know if she's got a problem or not. So we went down and checked on her. Anyway, um, I was really surprised. I believe she said 450000 for it. 40 acres of bare farmland. That's nothing seriously anymore 
I was really surprised. I don't know if it would be buildable. The realtor gal was talking about, oh, you know, it'd be great with the uh, irrigation well on it. I said, yeah, a little trick to that one. You're sitting in the middle of an area where they already shut off irrigation wells 30 years ago. And the place right beside it had a rather large irrigation well. And when they lost it, that's when they quit dairy and sold all the cows because they couldn't keep enough water to water them. So, anyway, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Probably be some New York outfit and buy it like they bought the 100 acres on the hill next to it and then sit on it because they think it's a gold mine because it's on the west coast and they can afford to buy it and nobody else can. Who knows? Anyway, we'll find out what happens there and maybe it'll never sell. God only knows. In the meantime, I'm finally headed to town. Feedings, figured I'd show you this. Yeah, clover here, they're mowing off. Red clover, you either take it off for hay or silage or you mow it off in the spring. A lot of guys like to get it done in April. But right there is one of them big fancy versatile tractors. Not too many of those around here. Got that last year, I think. But he's on his second time over flailing that off. So I say either do that or you take it off for hay or silage. A lot of guys like to flail it off and then they get it into the ground sooner and they're adding more to the ground. Then you get a seed crop off. The earlier you cut it off, the earlier the seed crop will come. And usually earliest is like late July usually September sometimes into October and right up here past the roundabout freaking crop circles anyway half these people don't know where they're going the other half just want to get in the way but right up here there's a light and there's a little patch there that is actually in a windrow Pretty sure I know where it's going for silage. Imagine the people I used to haul silage for are taking it. They sell silage down to the coast and a little bit around here, but they got a big pit up here about, I don't know, five, six miles behind me. But that piece there's all windrowed, laying down there to wilt. I'm guessing they probably cut it last night. So uh, tomorrow, especially this weather, they may be on it today the way the weather is because not that you can see much in the picture, but what I can see, it looks like it's wilting down pretty good. They might be here today. And literally, just up here, notice the houses through the trees. We're on the north edge of Forest Grove. There's actually a big housing development back there out of the last crop circle but when you get past all these houses they're not across the road yet because that's all swamp although <laughs> there ain't no water in there looks like a little mud in the bottom of it uh, starting up here at the power lines field we've taken some grass seed straw off of before another friend of ours farms this place looking at it on my way by it's all been flailed off it wasn't took off for silage so of course last I heard him and the guys that do most of the silage weren't getting along but who knows I don't know I just heard don't know for sure so I'll bring you back for something outside of Forest Grove they got evaporation ponds out here for the sewer system sewer outfit owns they don't own this little patch right beside me but they own all of that and outfit from about I think 60 miles down the valley is farming this place now it's in grass seed and yeah they gotta have the water on it or it ain't gonna live even though part of this was underwater part of the winter it's not there look how dry that is hate to guess how many gallons they're pumping a day they're going to be here a long time with those two travelers. If I remember right, there's 600 acres there. Something like that. So, and 
and uh, there's a lot of grass seed that's established that they're putting a lot of water on is in order to actually get a good seed crop. If I remember right, they say they got to have at least three inches of rain last part of May, first part of June, and I don't think it's going to happen. They're talking rain, I think, starting this weekend, and they're talking rain for all next week, but they're not talking any amounts. So I think it's going to be like what we got before. You know, a week ago we had rain for three or four days, but it would rain for five minutes in between the sun and the wind. Three minutes after it quit, everything was drier than it was before, so it's going to be interesting. Just had a talk with the guy I got the parts from, too, about that, and uh, he's concerned, and most of what he's got is gut irrigation, and a lot of the people they, that he deals with, you know, where they're at out there, they got an irrigation district, or they're out of the creek, or the river. And uh, they all got water. We don't have that. I mean, we do at home, but that's the only place we have water. Irrigation, irrigation district stops about eight miles short of getting to our area. And uh, it's going to be too long of a video. It's going to show you where there's an irrigation box up here, grass seed field that's already been watered. But it's going to be too long of a video if I do that. But if I'm lucky, maybe there's still a couple of horses out here. This place here on the left, they got some Belgians. And they're just letting them have a little strip around the outside. But they must have got tired of being out in the sun. Oh, well. You can see it. Mount Hood's over there. I was going to get to the other, but I didn't look quick enough. Oh, there's an irrigation box right there. There's another one, other side of this hump in front of us. And more after that. Beats. I don't know if those are going to be for harvesting beets or if they're going to be for seed. I'm going to guess maybe seed. The guy that's got that, he'll, he'll probably go either way. And one of his trucks right in front of me. I haven't seen that one on the road for a while. Usually you only see them out during harvest, they do a lot of sweet corn, beans, and peas, whatever there is to do. And for us, the flow, well, there is a outfit in Forest Grove that to dehydrator, they take sweet corn, but they've only got a handful of growers. Otherwise, it all goes down Salem or Staten or farther. So you're talking 60, 70, 80 mile one way. Just thought I'd give you that tidbit too. You know, may as well show you something, right? Hey, look, here's some of that grass seed that's getting some irrigation on it too. Wonder if Maury got stuck getting the irrigation set up. I doubt it. Well, he probably did. He probably had a couple of helpers. We got the gun running out here. Drive just the truck going by here, I mean, dust on the edge of the room back there. It's in there, too. It's like, really? It's not dry at all. Quick shot of some crimson in full bloom. This was some earlier planted stuff. These guys always get it in early, so usually it'll come a little earlier. Um, actually, got some really huge heads on that. I'm really surprised. Here's another one for you. Looking at that wheat. Looks like the heads are just right there waiting to come up. And it's way early for that here. But, I'd say it's going to be one of those years. Even this crimson field, this is a different outfit, has got this. But the, the heads on those, looks like they're all like the size of my thumb, which is really good. Now the biggest thing is, if they just got enough moisture so they fill out. Time will tell. She's almost done, but I got money for a video. Um, we're gonna put straw in tomorrow. She gets done doing that. We got a load of tow to feed, and she's got to go get her car from getting realigned. 
I ran a little bit. She did 99.9% of it. I just did where she wasn't comfortable getting close to the gates and that kind of thing. And back scraping away from that little wall. So, oh, well, and I back scraped this up here too. So, that's pretty much our day. And she's going to get her tote bag of feet out of here before the birds and the freaking rodents empty it. The birds have been making a mess out of it. And something else has been into it. And there's a pile of grain there between those two bikes. Whatever's getting into it, they don't like the pellets. They go after the corn. And I haven't found a hole in the bag yet. Surprisingly. So, anyway. And... Yeah, the sun's disappeared. It's got overcast and it's muggier than muggy. But anyway, that would be our day and more than a long enough video for you.